Welcome, Eratusa novice. I'm Shinmiri, and welcome back to another lesson in the Eratusa Academy. Deck targeting is one of the most complex tournament strategies. It requires high deck building skills as well as knowledge of your tournament opponents and the pro rank and tournament meta. In this video, we will discuss how to construct the best targeting strategy. Just keep in mind that this is only valid for a conquest format tournament where each player has to win with every single one of their decks in order to move on to the next match. So you should use the targeting strategy when you expect a certain deck to be very prevalent in the tournament. It could be either because you saw some tournament participants using that deck lately, or maybe it's just a very popular meta deck. The goal of this strategy is to build your decks in a way that helps you win against the one deck or sometimes two that you expect to play against very often. However, this strategy also likely lowers your power in other matchups. So just keep in mind that this is a very high risk, high reward strategy. So how do we target exactly? Well, there are two ways of deck targeting. We like to call them micro and macro targeting. Micro targeting focuses on targeting one very specific deck, while macro targeting focuses on targeting a certain group of decks, which we will go into more details later. So for micro targeting, we aim to target one very specific deck. Before we choose this strategy though, we have to be sure, we have to analyze our opponents and be very certain that they're gonna bring this specific deck. For example, let's say we expect our opponents to bring this, this deck here, Arrakis Swarm Consume. It's a very high synergy deck that relies on utilizing its leader ability to generate a lot of one power tokens and then uh, consuming them or destroying them yourself and relying on engines such as Slizzard, Vran Warrior, and Ruhin to get a lot of value over a long round. If we think that our opponents are mostly going to bring this deck in their lineup, then we can target it and try to have it make it have a very difficult time beating our deck lineup. So how would we do that? For example, we could build, uh, we could put Usurper in our in our lineup. Usurper is a leader that disables Arrakis Queen's ability, and then that's a huge part of what this deck wants to do, and it's a big disruption to their strategy. And then for your other decks, you could put in a lot of locks or damaging cards for their engine threats, such as Barbagazi, Slizzard, Ruhin, and Sheetroll. Um, for the factions that can't rely on Usurper's leader ability, you could even throw in stuff like Mastercraft Spear, uh, a card that can ping all the Arrakis tokens to deny points from Arrakis Queen. Basically, whatever the targeted deck is weak to, you want to put into your decks, and you put a lot of that in it. When it comes to macro targeting, or also known as soft targeting, we want to target a larger set of decks. Most common examples would be targeting all the tall decks, uh, decks with high power units, or targeting decks that play a lot of units that go wide, or even targeting decks that barely play any units, usually control decks. This strategy is useful when one of these groups of decks is prevalent in the meta, but we are not confident enough to target one specific deck. So for example, if the meta consists of a lot of high point units, we could bring uh, as many Scorch effects as possible in our decks. Like we could play an Ethne Scorch deck, for example. And then for our other deck, we could play something like this mid-range Morvan deck that has Leo Bonhart that destroys an enemy with eight or more power. That's a very good anti-tall tech. And also Peter. Peter resets the unit to its base power, so very good against tall boosting units such as Unicorn, Ghoul, Osrel, stuff that's, for example, very popular right now in the meta. If we expect to see a lot of decks that are focused on killing our units, then we could bring decks focused on playing spells and artifacts. However, just like with micro-targeting, we have to heavily adjust our decks, which will require good deck building skill. So in conclusion, we can say that targeting is the highest risk and high, highest reward strategy in Gwent tournaments. It focuses more on the deck building aspect than on the actual play skill level. If you have analyzed your opponents correctly though, and they bring the decks that you are targeting, you should have no trouble beating them. However, if they didn't bring the decks you're targeting, or you get unlucky with the draw and you don't match up to those players that brought those decks that you're targeting, then your chances will be very slim. So that's it for this lesson in targeting strategies in tournaments. Make sure you check out all of our other Eratusa Academy lessons on teameratusa.com, and we'll see you next time.